This is Steve Shobrin, one of my best friends of all time, favorite people. Welcome him to TBN tonight. Would you, okay. Steve Shobrin? Appreciate it. Pastor of Northside Community Church That's in right. Newburgh, Oregon. That's right. In the Portland area. Yeah. Steve uh, wrote a book years, not that long ago, Conspiracy of Kindness. This is the nicest guy, the nicest pastor you'll ever meet. <laughs> Uh, Steve built one of the great churches in Cincinnati, probably 7,000 people. Yeah. And he built it on acts of kindness. Uh, if you remember the movie uh, Steve Carell, uh, a.k.a. Michael Scott, uh, the movie Evan Almighty, well, Steve, he, he was actually a consultant in that movie. They actually did, well, consultant in the sense that they used a line from your book that, right. uh, what is it called? Small I'm things done with great love will change the world. Say it again because I'm going to get out of the way. Small things done with great love will change the world. Small things done with great love will change the world. Let me yeah. just set this up. I go to speak for him in Cincinnati. Seven services on a Sunday. Yeah. And in between services, instead of saying, can I get you a Starbucks? He takes me to a bar where we clean toilets in between services. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I don't even do this at home. And uh, my man is just out in the community serving, doing acts of kindness. Steve, thank you so much for the legacy of servant. You coined the phrase servant evangelism. Yeah. I'm talking way too much, but just take it from there and say, where did that come from? And talk about the impact of just serving in these small ways. Well, you know, I, I planted a lot of churches with my wife, Janie, and every place we went, it seemed like people were not really looking for us. We had to kind of chart our way forward and often in places that were kind of like scratching the ground to go plant something it was kind of like asphalt and so you had to kind of condition things a little bit and uh, got to uh, the second third fourth place we went to plant a church and people were not asking you know how can we join up you know what's the uh, the where can we sign up and give you our tithe and that kind of thing and uh, uh, one day I was uh, driving my school bus which was my legitimate job and uh, I was complaining to the Lord and I said uh, God there has to be a more lucrative way to be miserable and uh, I, I thought the Lord spoke to me and said, uh, the problem is that you're kind of boring, Steve. And, uh, and I thought that was the enemy, so I rebuked it. But uh, it turns out to be the Lord. And uh, so I uh, went home and told Janie what I thought the Lord might have been saying. And she says, I think that is the Lord. And uh, then I, I realized that I had this wife that was agreeing with God. But uh, anyway, I ended up uh, going back. And, and Janie and I read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Then got done, went back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Began to see that... What Jesus did was he went out among people that were kind of the disenfranchised, kind of the, the radical fringe, to use a Marshall McLuhan term, uh, and just began to love them and to connect with them, the people that had not a whole lot to offer, and uh, began to see pretty quickly that they responded to the gospel. And so we began to uh, dream a little bit and say, what could we do that would be less than boring uh, by aiming out into the community, by just serving, loving, uh, massaging people's uh, souls a little bit, and uh, so we started out doing like a free car wash and uh, just put up signs that totally free car wash. No kidding. We aren't cheerleaders trying to get your donations. And uh, so we had people pulling in, you know, one after the other, several dozen cars. And they would say, so who do I make my check out to? Because when you think about Christians, you think they're either trying to tell me something that they, they think I need to hear or they're putting their hand out like this saying, uh, please donate to our cause. And when you don't do either one of those things, they end up saying, so what's the catch? And so we just said that God is incredibly in love with you. And he wants to show you that love by us doing a service to you. And, uh, and, and very often people would tear up. They would, I had to develop a tearing system, actually, one through ten. Because sometimes they get to a level one tear, which only uh, women, only men can do, actually. It gets to the edge of your eye. And then only men can do this because it takes testosterone to do it. You suck the tear back in, kind of a, like this. And it goes back into your eye. And women... Because they have estrogen, it actually goes down the cheek. They go right to a level two tier. It goes down the cheek a little bit. And then uh, a level ten tier is you have to have your glasses off, but the tears actually shoot off the edge of your eye like this. And uh, so uh, began to see that almost everybody we served began to have an emotional response. They, they would do something uh, as they got in touch with the love of God in a practical way. And uh, uh, it, it was pretty amazing, in, in, even in Ohio, where people tend to be a little more reserved, a little more... Uh, cautious. Uh, they're not exactly beating down your door to join up with what you're doing. And begin to see pretty quickly that people were uh, actually very open to, to, to Christ. And uh, pretty quickly grew from five people to 30 people. It took about a year. <laughs> but uh, second year grew from 30 people to 100 people. And then it began to snowball after that. And 
and eventually grew to uh, 7,000 people with uh, actually nine services. We had seven on the weekends and often two on Wednesday nights. And uh, it's just a lot of speaking going on. Yeah. Steve, that, uh, there's so many things going through my mind because the car wash alone was a picture because when people drive in, no, you know, free car wash, they think, okay, they're just trying to maybe get more. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, don't set a price, just make a donation. Yeah. But you would not let them give, no matter what they did. So, no, no, we don't want this. And that, yeah. that carried over for So just talk about some of the other things that were strategies yeah. that besides the car wash. We, we actually eventually changed that to a dollar car wash. And that seemed more believable, so we put up dollar car wash. We had a lot more cars pull in, but the deal was we give them a dollar for the privilege of washing their car. And then they really get emotional. They say, no, you're, oh, you're <laughs> breaking my heart here, you know, kind of thing. And uh, so we get a big stack of dollar bills, ran out, then it was into the car wash, you know. But uh, you go out and we wash windshields. Uh, you know, I got pretty good at this thing. I became kind of the master, you know, jujitsu car windshield washer kind of thing. You know, you have to practice a little bit so you don't leave a streak because then they're going to get <laughs> mad at you. You have a big streak crush window. Um, but if you get, if you practice a little bit, you get pretty good. And, uh, put a little card by the driver's side handle. It says, uh, your windshield looked a little dirty, so we washed it. Hope we brought some light to your day on the back side. I always put my personal cell phone number on there and then put a logo of the church and put a, a, a uh, a map to the church, service times, website address, that kind of thing. And uh, I figured out that five or six people, even a small group, can go out and, and wash maybe a couple, three hundred windshields in a, an hour and a half or so. It becomes incredibly, uh, almost exponential as you do these things. There was a lady years ago, I remember something that made the national news about a grandmother. Yeah, It yeah. was because you'd take, people would go out and put uh, money in people's parking meters that was about, that were about to expire. Yeah. and. Uh, and tell about that. Remember that story? I, didn't, I, we have, I haven't seen you in a long time, but that story comes to my mind. Was that a... That's Sylvia. Yeah, okay, Sylvia. little Sylvia. She was 65, and she wasn't doing it exactly the way that we encourage people to do it. But she went out and saw an expired meter and put it uh, into the meter and, and flipped it over. And there's actually some places in some cities where it's illegal to... They call it re-metering, where you, they don't want you to, to stay there all day long, so they encourage you to go through one cycle of metering and then move on. And she put it in one of those illegal areas and flipped it over and said, you're not going to get this one to the cop. And he says, I guess I'll get you. And he handcuffed her <laughs> and made the news. And she was on all sorts of late night shows. And it was kind of interesting. But uh, uh, I, he went to court and all sorts of interesting things. But uh, uh, so that was one of the, we, we still feed meters in some places where it's legal. So we, we've done a little more checking on that kind of thing. <laughs> okay. And uh, but my favorite project, I got to tell you, is cleaning toilets. And uh, I, I go in with, I, you have to take your, your, uh, your wife or uh, other women with you, whatever, because if you go in with a couple of guys into a gas station, for example, say, we like to clean your toilet, they, they say, did you, uh, are you casing us out to come back and rob us later on, or what's going on here exactly? And so um, go in and have a little kit with your brushes. And I your... did this with you. This was, this was completely embarrassing. <laughs> I was pretending that I was kind of, yeah, this is cool, but I was like, I mean, this is, I would have easier gone to Egypt to preach the gospel than do this. This was like, so I got to slow down because this is pretty dramatic. Cleaning toilets as a pastor in the city. Go ahead. So we, we go into places like gas stations, bars, restaurants, um, public places, not homes. That's a little bit too much, you know, <laughs> but, uh, just walk up to the manager and say, we're here to clean your toilet. If you, if you ask him, may we clean your toilet? They'll just start moonwalking like Michael Jackson backwards, you know, kind of thing. And, and then they, they say, well, we've never had anybody offer that before. And, and we just say, uh, yeah, but, uh, if Jesus were walking around town today, we think he'd be doing stuff like this.